Hello pool players, Ron here. Welcome once again to the Pool Student Channel. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Take a peek out there real quick. You see that? There's about 20 inches of snow on my railings and on my balcony overlooking my lower patio. Unbelievable. Uh, real quick, just gonna do the intro, intro to this video. I had a subscriber that reached out to me and he's been in a slump and he wanted to send me a video that I could look at and see if I could find something within his stroke. Now he has sent me one and I noticed something but I needed to have a little bit more footage so he's working on another video that I can critique. I see some fundamental issues. So it got me to thinking, I decided to come up here tonight and try to run a couple racks in a row that I could do a voiceover on and let you guys know what it is that I think about as I go through my progression through each rack. Now the first nine ball rack that you're gonna see went rather smoothly, but the second one I got out of line at the end and I almost did not run out. But let me explain it to you. So without further ado, let's take a look at it and go from there. What this video is about is trying to maintain consistency with your pre-shot routine and your fundamentals. I'm putting this together with two break and runs so that you can see and I can critique what it is that I'm trying to do here in terms of maintaining consistent fundamentals. First thing I'll say is that I step into the shot after I've looked at the line. See there, I've looked at the line. I come around the shot and I slide into it and right away I feel that I'm going to make the shot. If I did not feel I would make this shot, I would stand back up, realign, and then go back down on the shot. Now on this shot, I'm looking at it and I'm calculating not only the cut into the corner pocket, but also where the cue ball is going to go so that I can gauge the speed. There again, I slide into the shot. I feel like I'm going to make it, so I go with it. I did brush the eight there, and that threw me off a little bit, but I do have a simple combination in that the five ball is hanging in the corner pocket. I'm standing behind the shot. I'm looking at where I want to hit with the ghost ball position on that four. I make a nice stroke. I hit it perfect. The only problem here is I did not take into account the reach that I would have. And I, I shoot left-handed. I'm not as good left-handed as I am right-handed. And I, I notice here as I look at this, I'm a little bit high on the cue. I could have come down a little bit lower. I had a pretty good stroke, but with the new Simonis cloth, I thought I would come off that top rail and come down center table so I could cut that six ball into that upper right corner, but it checked up. So now I'm forced to take this cross side bank shot. And breaking away from the fundamentals for a second, banks on this new cloth require me to hit it a little firmer to maintain angle in and angle out, otherwise it'll run a little long. So now I'm forced to take this combination shot. And if you guys have not seen my video on shooting combinations and how to align them, you need to check it out. I'll include it in the uh, description of this video. So you guys could check that out and see how I do this. It works out real well. Okay, getting on that nine, obviously you don't wanna have that cue ball run up there like that. I wanted it to be a lot shorter. I put that spin on it. That spin actually made it jet off the rail, but that's okay. I practice this shot all the time with my uh, spot to spot or 910 drill. Both those drills are really this shot and I feel very comfortable with the spot shot. We've got to always be able to make spot shots. So anytime that you can put together a drill that has spot shots in it, that's a great thing. Okay, so rack one is down. Now, during this rack, this is a little bit different, and I'm glad that I did something wrong here because I want to talk about it. One of the things that I used to do quite often, and I'll discuss that uh, when it does come up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, break this again. Uh, there's uh, Just to talk about my break real quick, these two racks, I'm trying to give it a pop break where I'm parking the cue ball about center table. 
I have been using a draw brake where I actually move the cue ball a little bit more off the side rail or long rail, uh, maybe about eight or 10 inches away from center table. And then I uh, put a little draw on the cue ball and bring it back. Pretty good break. Cue ball is parked where I like to see it. I do have a shot on this one. Now this is where um, I make a mistake within my fundamentals and it's something I battled early on. I thought I pretty much have it under control. I just didn't think about it here because I was so focused on making this one ball so that I could have two break and runs, uh, you know, back to back. Watch how my body moves here, how much body English I put on this. I thought I missed it, and when I'm unsure of myself, I'll have a tendency to do what I just did there, and that is steer the cue with body English. It's so bad. If you're playing someone and you show that chink in your armor, that gives them the uh, idea that you're just not comfortable. And of course I wasn't, but I need to be more still and I'm glad that that actually happened because that points that out to me and I just need to work a little harder on my game. Okay, so there I've looked at that shot. I want to make sure that I see the line going in. I looked over it. I feel good when I come down on it. And I make it. Now I, I probably could have put a little more inside spin on that ball. That would have killed that more off that rail because it ran a little bit high up the table. And I'm glad I didn't end up on top of that nine. That was very fortunate. There again, I'm stepping down in the line. I'm having a little trouble here with my speed with when I'm adding spin, and that one there jetted right off. And if, if you really look at that shot again, I cut that shot in uh, where I hit the cue ball too thin, I overcut the shot, and that's also what contributed for that uh, to that cue ball uh, running up table like it did. So that one shot where I overcut that ball into that bottom corner created all of this mess. Now there I got, you know, I was funny on that seven, so I elected to go with follow instead of draw because it was so thin going to the side pocket. I would have had to let the cue ball run like crazy up table and back down. I thought I could just hit it thin into the side, but because I hit the ball too full, I almost scratched and I got hung up down table. But here I just hit a really good shot. I recovered. I hit a nice thin shot where I got perfect on this nine. But that pretty much concludes fundamentals and trying to be consistent. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And thank you very much for watching. And like I always say, keep on practicing.